Okay. And Diana Cabrera, y'all give her a big round of applause. Thank you for being here, girl. Hey guys, so I'm Diana Cabrera. Um, I'm an agent here. I've been in the business for almost 10 years, so um, it's exciting. We've seen a lot of it. Uh, today we are actually going to talk about how to capture leads in social media. Who in here wants to be able to use social media to get people to call you and ask you to be their agent? Yes, that's my favorite part, honestly. Um, so I basically built my business through my sphere, and then I used my social media to kind of like go hand in hand and so basically my business is people calling me all the time i don't ever prospect i don't ever reach out to people i just post and people message me so that's kind of what i'm going to teach you guys here today so i'm going to start by putting my contact information on here um and i'm going to be giving you guys a lot of tools that i use that has made my business just easier and just more systematic um so that's my name here is my phone number I will go ahead and tell you guys, I'm more of a texter than a caller. So if you guys ever want to reach out, please text first, because I will probably miss your call, but I will text you back. Can you put your social media on here? Yes. So I do have two, and I'm going to kind of go over that. I have my personal one where I will post just my day-to-day -day life and my whatever selfies and stuff. And then I have my business one, which I will talk a little bit about business, but then it's still showing my personality, which is really what people like. They like to see who you really are. They like to see your genuine personality. So if you're, you know, like peppy and exciting, or if you're just very like firm and direct, just show who you are. Because at the end of the day, whenever they do choose to work with you, they're going to see your personality. So you might as well show it up front, right? So let me actually grab my phone because I don't have my panels. I make them a little complicated. <laughs> All right. So the three that I use, I use Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. Anybody on here on all three of them? Yes? Okay, cool. I like them. And I will tell you guys, you do have different audiences in each of them. So the content for each does have to, well, it doesn't have to be different, but if you make it different, you'll get a little bit better results. And I will give you guys pretty much the, um, what I use and what I post and what works for me. So our business page on Instagram, it's sell period with period and then it's T as in Tom, T as in cat, G as in goat. So the Cabrera group, which is what I chose to brand myself with since my last name is Cabrera. And this is Insta. And then that's my business one. That one is public. So anybody can follow me on that, whatever. My personal one. So this I try to like be like, okay, this is for like friends and people that I actually know in person. So um, you guys are more than welcome to add me on here. So it's underscore live underscore by underscore Diana and then underscore on Facebook you guys can just look me up with my name and I always share like my uh, business page on over to my personal so for friends you guys will be able to see that and on TikTok I also have two <laughs> um so on TikTok our business one is at your favorite realtors I'm like, ah, I had a space. <laughs> all right, so TikTok, it's all together, your favorite realtors. All right, and then my um, TikTok one is just Life by Diana. So the one thing that I would say, if you're going to try to be on different platforms, see if you can get the same uh, or similar, you know, username on all platforms just for recognition purposes. So there's that. Um, so yeah, feel free to add me. And afterwards, if you don't get it, then I'll just, we'll, we'll connect. It's fine. Do that second one, Instagram. These two are Instagram, yes. And then this one's TikTok. And Facebook is just my name. It's a dumb question probably, but I'm on TikTok and it blocked me from following more than 10,000 people. Oh, were yes. you following them all like at the same time yeah. or did you do it organically? Just, I can't follow anybody else on it, so oh. delete. That's kind of odd. It yet, but... Yeah, I haven't heard of that. <laughs> I'm not really sure. I know TikTok doesn't like to do like 
spammy behaviors if you might have done too many or too like of a pattern when mm-hmm. following people maybe that's why um but typically i think whenever they um block you on something as temporary so maybe give it some time but also google it i have no idea i've never heard of that but okay guys all right so anyways those are my handles follow me feel free to copy any of the stuff that i put i just kind of come up with stuff and post it but i will give you guys some great ideas too um so let's go ahead and just start with the basics right because it's not just about posting so let's start so it does take time to learn something um, more time to implement it and even longer to approach mastery of it so this quote is really great because we need to just keep in mind that you're not going to start posting today and then all of a sudden everyone's calling you, right? It takes time. I've been doing this nine, like almost 10 years and it wasn't immediate. Sometimes I was just posting, 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 like nobody was interacting, nobody was doing something. And my first thought was, oh my gosh, they're probably thinking this girl won't stop with the real estate, but I just kept going, right? And so now it works. So you just got to be consistent. That is going to be the key for social media, consistency. If you're going to post every day, post every day. If you're doing it every other day, always do it every other day because whether you want it or not, people are kind of low-key expecting for you to post and so forth. All right, so one of the easiest strategies, which is something that you guys can start with, is called the 1051. So this is just, if you guys are very like checklisty type of person, uh, this kind of just gives you a reminder. So Basically, whenever you log into whatever social media that you're wanting to work on and kind of build your community around it, you want to give 10 likes, right? Because of course, if you like somebody's post, it comes up on their notification and then they start kind of thinking about you, right? Like, oh yeah, I, yeah, this person, I do know them. They're my friend on Facebook or they're my friend on Instagram, whatever people look at their likes. So that's like the first very low key way of just staying top of mind, right? You want to go the next step you want to leave five comments right and not just like little emojis but actual comments you know i always say if people are posting about something they want other people to know about it right so if somebody's posting you know that they're like on a weight loss journey you want to be supportive of that kind of thing and you know congratulations you're doing great you know that kind of thing if somebody's posting about a trip that's so cool what place was it you know just something like that engage with them um because that that's just kind of what gets you get gets them thinking about you. And then lastly, if you really want to kind of go the extra mile, send somebody a message, right? Now with this one, I'm telling you guys, I am the person that does not like to be pushy. I do not like to look salesy, whatever. So sometimes with my lead gen, if I want to do 20 contacts a day and I've already reached out to the people that I need to follow up with and I've already like answered all the calls and for some reason there's not too much activity, my like number one hack is I will go onto stories and start replying to people's stories because that gets you into their DM, into their message without you looking like a creeper. Like, hey, we've never talked, but how are you? Like, no, like you posted about a really cool coffee shop. Hey, where's that located? Did you like it? What did you order? I'm gonna go check it out, you know? So it's very casual, very low key, but it gets you guys to kind of start with that social media friendship, right? I personally, um, I like to talk to people. I like to do things, but I do not like to be pushy. And that was like since day one. So now if they don't reply, it's fine. A lot of people don't stay on top of their messages, but they will see it eventually and they will reply. And then they'll kind of be a little embarrassed and they'll be like, oh my gosh, I didn't see it. I don't really get on here, but like text me next time, you know, things like that. And you guys will be surprised. It's people that you never talk to that will be so happy that you actually reached out. So do it. (laughs) As far as posting, all right, we get this all the time. People, you know, new agents are like, do I post personal? Do I post business? Do I do all business, all personal? Whatever. Rule of thumb, do about 80% personal, 20% business, combination of so that way you don't look salesy, but you are still mentioning that you're in real estate, right? You don't want to be a secret agent. I will say that my biggest thing that helped my business was that I was always kind of putting it out there that I was in the business of real estate, right? And I will give you guys like a million ideas of little things that you guys can just kind of post about as you're just going through your day. And it makes it so easy. So we'll, we'll go over that in a second. Um, but yes, so personal interest. Pets are such a good one. People love to see cute pets. Um, if you like art, if you're into cooking, you know, post your recipes, a plate of your nice food whenever you're done cooking. People love that. 
if you're into exercising and working out, you will definitely connect with all the gym people or exercise people, whatever exercise you do. Um, if you're into outdoor adventures, a lot of us want to do them, but we never do. But it's kind of cool to see people do it. So you can connect with that. Uh, live music, team sports. I personally am all about my family and a lot of my clients are very like family oriented. So we connect because they see how close I'm to my family. They're close to their family. So then they call me to be their agent, right? So I post a lot when I go to dinner with my parents. I post a lot when, you know, my niece comes to visit me and she does something cute. Um, I post about my puppy. I post about all the coffee that I drink everywhere. <laughs> so, you know, little things like that. Um, what other personal stuff do you guys post already or think that would be good to post? Any ideas to brainstorm? Yes. Mm hmm Yep. I love posting controversial stuff because it gets people voting or asking about it or just contradicting. I'm a pineapple on pizza type of person, so I will post that and everyone's like, what is this? <laughs> yes, or like, yeah, or like if there's a trending show, if you're, you know, the kind of person that just lounges or watches a TV show hey, who's watching this, you know, this thing, blah, blah. Because at the end of the day, too, it's all about the algorithm, right? So you don't necessarily, you know, need all the people saying, oh, my gosh, that open house you did was amazing. But if they start commenting on your stuff, then your feed starts showing up more on their feed. And so then now they're starting to see a little bit more of you, right? So it's all about interaction at first and then content, okay? Um, any other ideas? Tips and tricks. Yes. I find them on TikTok. I can't believe you can use a can opener to open this darn plastic yeah. anything. Yes. That tight plastic can opener. It's insane. Yeah. So it's many good. things. Anything you buy, you know how it comes in like that really hard plastic that you jab with the inside of it. Oh, like it's like a Costco or something with a really yeah. big print. You just put it in and use the can opener to open the tip. Oh, interesting. Yeah. And a lot of things that, like, for example, if you guys are going to be into, like, making video content, it's sometimes it's just giving your opinion on something you saw, right? So right now I think there's, you know, there's, like, viral videos depending on kind of what stage of your life you're in and whatever you're watching on TikTok. So you can just say, hey, I just watched this video and this is what happened and then here's my take on it. Again, it's just people want to know the real you. Like, who are you? What's your thought process? What do you stand by? You know, that kind of thing. So it's cool stuff. Now the 20%. Now I will tell you guys, you may not necessarily get too many interactions on this, but people are watching. Okay. So listings, open houses, um, awards and speaking events. Now, obviously the easiest one here probably um, as a new agent will be an open house. If you don't have any listings, you can host open houses for anyone here in the office. A lot of agents don't like to do their open houses once they're, you know, very uh, successful. So then they'll just put it out there and they'll say on our Facebook group. So make sure you're in there. They will say, hey, we have this open house available this weekend. Who wants to host it? So then that's your opportunity to promote it on your social media. It's your opportunity that whenever you're in the house and you don't have any visitors, you do a little live show the house. That's what I used to do when I first started. Um, you can just literally market as much as you want from that house, right? You can go door knocking to invite neighbors. And so it's just this one property that can give you so much content, right? When you're preparing the flyers, you post preparing the flyers for this open house. Um, whenever you are buying the cookies for the open house, you know, like every little thing that you do can be a piece of content, right? So that's the biggest thing. Now, one thing that I love to do and I see a lot of agents do is when you do a showing, right? So let's say you do a showing. It's not the right fit for your client, but it was a gorgeous house and it's a great deal. You can ask the listing agent, hey, I thought your listing was amazing. Now, you do have to be very precautious with that. So I typically only do that with agents that are here at our office. So if I show one of the agents here at our office, if I show their listing, then I will just tell them, hey, I thought your listing was awesome, wasn't the right fit for my client. Is it okay if I share it on my social media to maybe find you another buyer? Because then you might make a deal. You know, it has happened. So as long as they say yes, sometimes they'll tell you, go ahead and post it as yours. Sometimes they'll tell you yes, but go ahead and credit us as the listing agent. Whatever they tell you, go ahead and do it. Um, but it's great because people just look at the pictures and they'll message you, hey, the house we posted, can I get more details? Boom, you got a new buyer lead, right? So it's, it's great. 
Um, so that was probably like the biggest thing that I would post when I first started, because it did take me, I started super young and it was during the holidays and I totally forgot I was an agent. That was just like living my best life with no job, right? And then um, whenever I was like, oh, I probably should start now, I started with the showings and that was what I would post, right? So there's that. Um, if you do want to go above and beyond and be a little extra, you can try to support or do something for community service, right? Um, I see people that have a passion for like dogs and so they'll kind of highlight the dogs that need to be adopted and things like that. Um, if you want to give to a certain cause, you know, you can post about that. Um, we actually just started this year um, with a scholarship. And so it's something that we care about. We're like, okay, we're gonna give this amount out of every closing. So when you close with us, you're also supporting this cause, right? And so we post about it. Um, KW has pretty much like an event, like a charity type event every single month. You can tag on to that, you know, invite people to the blood drive, go volunteer to whatever thing we're doing, the diaper drive, different types of things. You can use that as it's you doing it for the community, you know? There's so many agents here, nobody really knows who, <laughs> just just do it within your circle. So any questions so far? Sometimes I talk fast, I get excited. <laughs> no, everyone's good? Okay, cool. Alrighty, so social media strategies. Connect with people you know, bless you. Connect with people you know. Um, I will say some people are a little bit more reserved. Some people don't like to add everybody that you know. I do, and it works fine for me. Um, I don't add random people, but I do add somebody that I know of, right? And we've seen each other, and maybe we've been at an event. Like, we maybe didn't really talk to each other other than, hey, but I know of them, and I want them to know I'm an agent, so I'm going to add them. Nine times out of ten, they will, they will accept you. So, I mean, if you're not shy, just go for it. I mean, obviously, the only thing is that if you start adding everyone, you do want to be a little cautious as to what you are posting. Um, you know, uh, my rule of thumb is when I say controversial stuff, is controversial, silly stuff, like toppings on pizza, not political, religious views, right? So just keep that in mind. Um, that's the best way to lose clients. <laughs> So just keep that in mind. Um, if you live in a neighborhood that's very popular, you are definitely um, more than welcome to post things in regards to the neighborhood. Like, where is it located? Where are the pros? Why do people love living there? You know, um, you can make yourself uh, the expert of anything on social media because uh, there is no limit, no control over anything. If you want to post all about a neighborhood, if you want to post all about a certain price point, all about first time home buyers, all about investors, like whatever you choose your niche to be, you can be the expert. All you have to do is post about it, right? Um, this was such a great thing that I did when I started. Well, I still do it till this day. When we close on a home, I take a picture of them. At first, I will tell you, I used to jump in the picture with them. And then I was like, you know what? This moment is about them. So what I do now is I take a picture of them post a congratulations thing and I tag them. And so I've gotten better response by me not being in the picture where people are like, oh my gosh, Diana, you were so amazing. Like we love you, da da da. And then they send me referrals, right? But I have gotten calls from friends of people that we close, right? So I post a picture, congratulations on their first home, blah, 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 and then tag them. And then like two of their friends called, hey, I saw my friend just bought with you. Like, can you help us too? So that, I feel like it's easy. Now, I will tell you, not everybody likes to get posted, but it's very rare that I get someone that says, hey, don't post me. Everyone's usually excited and everyone's probably going to post it themselves, too. So that works for me. Um, it's different for everyone. So I guess feel out your circle and see what they feel like. Right. Um, and with that, I do keep track of their home anniversaries and I do send a card every single year. I have a whole system around it. If you guys are getting started, please start on it. Those are like my two like easiest, I care about you type thing for my clients, birthdays, home anniversaries. Every single year, if I don't talk to them, which I do, but if I didn't, they always get a birthday card, personalized birthday card, personalized anniversary, home anniversary card. And if anything, on the day of, if I want to go the extra mile, I'll text them. And that's a touch. That is, oh my gosh, my agent cares about me. It's been five years since she's still congratulating me. It just works. It makes them feel loved. So if you're that kind of person, I highly recommend that you do it. I just started doing it three years ago, and I've been in the business almost 10. 
So I wish I would have started since day one. Um, again, post listings and then engage. Uh, we do get a lot of comments where sometimes they'll comment, hey, where's the address? Um, what I don't want is everybody to kind of look at that comment and then not reach out. So then I'll be like, let me send it to you in a message. And then you start the conversation and you don't just send them the address. You say, hey, you know, thanks for your interest on this property. Here's the address, but you know, I'd love to show it to you. Like, are you pre-approved? And then just start filling them out. So any of these engagements is really an opportunity to just start a conversation. Okay. All right. So highlight your business. Let's see. Uh, client testimonials. You guys, those are golden. Okay. Another thing that I recently started and it took me forever to go back and try to gather all the testimonials. So what I do now is I try to gather it as part of our closing system, right? So we close, we take the picture, we send them the card to congratulate them. We post them, we tag them. We go ahead and get them in the system with like their anniversary to have like my reminder every year on my calendar. Um, as well, I go ahead and ask them for their birthdays and I just say, hey, you know, when's your birthday? Like we love to celebrate with our clients. Um, you know, so let me know your birthday and I'll just tell you happy birthday every year. I mean, we just tell them that and they love, they're like, yeah, it's my birthday. So and so my husband's is blah, blah, blah. And it just works. So then with that, we also say, also, we would love to get, you know, a testimonial from you. You know, if you thought we were great, like just go ahead and tell the story basically. And we personally get them to give us their testimonial on our Facebook page. Cause that's like our biggest I guess like following and that's kind of where I started, but there are agents that will get them on their Google page. Uh, some people will do it on Zillow. So whatever you think your platform is going to be that you're mainly going to focus on, you can get them there. And then what we did is we go ahead and copy them into a template and then we post it. So there's another piece of content. And I will tell you guys, we just kind of keep posting them reoccurringly. I mean, there's going to be new followers that didn't see it at the time that it happened. So it just gives you so much credibility. And it's true, you're not lying. I mean, that is what your client thought about you, even though it was five years ago, but hey, I'm sure the experience was good, right? So definitely highlight the good stuff. Um, don't post and ghost. So again, like I was telling you guys earlier with the tactic of 1051, you want to interact with people, engage with them. The last thing you wanna do is people, you know, commenting on all your posts and you're not even replying or waiting like three days to reply, just engage, you know? and I don't know how they tell you guys to count like your 10 touches or 20 contacts a day or whatever, but if I have a conversation with someone on social media, that's a contact for me. So there's that. <laughs> um, online communities, these things are pretty cool. I mean, at least on Facebook, there's the groups that you can be a part of. You can engage there. You might can make friends there. Um, I personally haven't necessarily, but I am part of the groups there, so I do get tagged whenever someone's like, hey, anybody needs a realtor? You know, so I mean, if anything, being in those pages in case you get tagged is pretty cool. Uh, the biggest thing for uh, social media, be authentic. Um, every time I teach this class, bless you, <laughs> every time I teach this class, there's always somebody that's like, well, I don't really like my voice, or I don't like how I look on video, da, da, da. Well. At the end of the day, I always tell them, when you do meet with that client for a buyer consult or a listing consult, they're going to see your face and they're going to hear your voice, right? So why not go ahead and just put it online? Again, if that's what you want to do, you want to do video, embrace video. Video is amazing. Some people don't like to read the long post. I don't like to read a long post, but I'll watch a video. So, you know, there's different things. Um, and as for help, there's so many people on here, like in this office that have great, you know, social media presence. So just reach out to any of them. I'm happy to help with that. I love social media and I'm all for it. So, you know, um, so recap 10, five, one, be yourself, be consistent. And there you go. Um, all right. So capture more leads. Uh, you love people, uh, but at the same time, you haven't yet learned to love hunting for them. So this just kind of goes back to what I was telling you guys. If you don't want to be salesy, that's fine. Some people are salesy and it works wonders for them. So just be genuine, right? I can't be salesy because that's just not who I am. I'm a very like, I don't even open the door and people knock on my door. I'm like, yeah, no. But, you know, some people do. So just figure out who you are, what comes natural to you, and then embrace it, right? Uh, your number one job is to find ways to get in the path of motivated buyers and sellers. I love this quote because essentially that is our job, right? 
So there's people buying and selling every single day everywhere, but they don't know that you are an agent. So how are they supposed to call you? So that's what I love about social media because you can just put yourself in front of hundreds, even thousands of people that you don't even know. I have had people reach out to me from a TikTok video that I posted, like a random person. And then when I meet with them, turns out that they're a friend of a friend of a friend of a friend, but they didn't know that I was an agent because of that. They knew I was an agent because I posted the three things that you need to be able to get approved for a house, right? So you just gotta use all the tools. And the biggest thing, of course, it's free. So why not, right? Um, let me see. Lead generation is a contact sport with simple rules. It's making contact with people through prospecting and marketing. Um, what goals do you guys have as far as lead genning? How many contacts are you guys going for? 10? Okay, cool. Anybody else does more? Do more? No? Okay, cool. Well, 10 is fine. <laughs> um, what I always tell newer agents as well is once you guys are done with the classes and you're done with this, if you are if you don't have enough clients or enough leads to be working with, don't just do 10 and be like, oh, my day's over. I did my 10. Like, no, do more. Like, do your 15, do your 20, whatever can take up the time. If you treat this as a full-time job and you try to put in your eight hours a day, you will get results. But the big mistake that we all do, like I said, I did when I started, was I would just be like, oh, well, I talked to my 10 people in one hour, so now let me just go do nothing, you know? And no, like, occupy your time. This is a real job where you can make real money if you really set your mind to it. All right, so this statistic is just amazing. So people essentially move every seven to 10 years. Right. So this is why we try to do the cards, the birthday, the anniversary, staying in touch with people, because somebody that bought with you is very likely going to sell. But statistics show that they typically don't even use their same agent, not because they didn't like them, but because they don't even know how to get in touch with them. Right. So this is why for me personally and what has worked for me, because most of our business is referrals, past clients and just people from social media that always end up being a friend of a friend of a friend. Or even if they're kind of random, then they kind of bring their whole circle into us. So we just stay in contact. Like I said, birthdays, anniversaries, I add them on social media. So then they kind of, they just know what's going on in my life, right? They know that now I have a niece and they know that now I got a puppy. And I know that they had another kid and that they had, you know, they got married and whatever. And I also try to always make them feel special. If something big happens in their life, I'm going to message them and be like, oh, I saw that you posted about this congratulations how is the married life how is the mom life like whatever you know so just really really stay in touch um treat them like your friends because they are at the end of the day they know so much about you you know so much about them um so just stay in touch and you will get repeat business and amazing referrals um just kind of showing you uh the difference between marketing and prospecting so marketing is money intensive a passive and long-term result. However, if you do use social media, you don't. it doesn't have to be money intensive. Uh, you can get great results without having to pay any of the extra ads or anything on social media. Um, it is passive, but again, in my experience, I, it's kind of like, I'll start my day by that. I'll post in the morning. By the end of the day, I have somebody reaching out. And of course, I will do my prospecting, but I've already got that running in the back end right? So that's, that's like my little secret. And that's what works. Um, and then yes, long term results, which is cool. Uh, and then prospecting, of course, is time intensive, because that's whenever you're reaching out to people directly, and you're being proactive. And yes, you can get immediate results. I think that the best business is going to have both. Uh, prospecting ideas. So for sell by owners, expired, circle prospecting, community outreach, uh, key relationships. This is great right now that you guys are starting. Go ahead and build all your relationships. And I will be the first one to tell you guys when I was told that at first, I was like, hey, I don't have time for that. Or I don't have a business yet. Like, what am I going to go tell them? Do it because now I'm trying to do it. And it's like, oh my gosh, I'm so busy. So the very first thing that I would do would be go to the banks that get walk-in buyers, right? If they have a mortgage product, Bank of America, Wells Fargo, Founders, Go talk to the mortgage lender, build a relationship with that mortgage lender, 
because people walk in there without an agent. And then if you have a great relationship with the mortgage lender, they will give your card out to them and then they will call you. And that's another little like back end extra lead that may come in. Um, I have great relationship with founders. I have a couple of um, lenders that whenever they get somebody, they'll hand on my card and then they call me and they're like, hey, you know, the lady at Founders gave me your card. I want to buy a house. I'm pre-approved already. It's like, what? Yes, let's do it. So that's key. Investors are also great. If that, if you want that to be one of your specialties, definitely, you know, read a couple books, do some research, how do flips work, rental properties, passive income. And once you have all that knowledge, if an investor, a potential investor asks you about it, and you give them like stuff that they know is legit, they're going to stick with you, right? The reason why some investors are shopping around with 20 different agents at the same time is because not one agent is giving them what they need. So they just feel like they need to shop around everywhere, hopefully get a deal somewhere. Um, so definitely do that. Uh, let's see. Walk-ins, booths, networking events, door-to-door -door canvassing, um, teaching and speaking. I mean, I... If you are part of a community, maybe like a church, you can offer to teach a first time home buyer seminar. You could even do it here and invite everybody and anybody. Um, you guys are actually able to use these spaces for free. So you can host your event here, get your lender partner, get the attorney partner, get your inspector to help you with sponsorship for like food and maybe like flyers or whatever it is that you wanna do and host your event. Again, it makes you look like an expert you can promote it on social media and it's just a great conversation starter. So we've done first time home buyer seminars and we've done like new investor seminars. We just did the new investor seminar on the fifth of this month and we had 40 people show up and out of those 40 people, we have their email address. We have their phone number. They're in our database. Uh, we're setting up one-on-one -on -one consultations to start a game plan. So that's at the very least, even if half of them buy with us, that's 20 transactions for the year. And these are all people that we highly emphasize. Hey, you need to be a homeowner or have a lot of savings to get started. And we talked about how do you get a rental? How do you do a flip? And that's it. And the food that we had was sponsored by our lender partner. We had the lender do a lot of the talking. I mean, you just, events are great for mass events. And again, goes with social media a lot of people would just go live on social media and that's their event right so definitely get creative those things do work i have a question did you e-blast it to announce the event or just post the event so no i did I, I did a lot of marketing for it i will tell you um i posted it every single day i did a little flyer and it was posted on my story i tagged the agent and then I went down the list of all my past clients in my sphere who I know that kind of have mentioned or asked about that. And I just said, hey, I have this event coming up, it's free. All I need is for you to register and how many people are coming with you. Um, and then here's the deadline. And then I sent them the little flyer. So I did like individual conversations. Um, and then I just posted it, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook. Um, and then my lender like put it on his story, you know, that kind of thing. So it was just really spreading the word. We did market it for one month and we did get the 40 people to come. So that was kind of like our thing, but definitely inviting people, you know, one-on-one -on -one will make a big difference on those kind of events. Um, all right. So marketing offline advertising, you can do, you know, radio, TV, newspaper, personal vehicles. That was kind of cool, but you got to make sure your driving's great because if not, Yes. This is in our materials, right? Uh, it should be, yes. That's what I thought. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I believe it should be in your material, yes. Um, bus stop benches, uh, magazines, billboards, yellow pages, grocery carts, moving vans. Out of all of those, I personally have tried the personal vehicle, and it was great, my, but my driving skills are horrible, so when I got a new car, I just stopped. <laughs> um, but, I mean, a lot of people have it, and it works. I mean, it, it's just up to you. At the end of the day, there's a million ways to get business. It's just what do you feel comfortable with? what brings you with your personality great results right uh online advertising so pay-per-click advertising seo social media portals out of all of those starting with no money i would say social media is going to be your best friend and there are a lot of agents who don't spend money on these kind of things because they've gotten their social media going so well 
that they don't need to pay, right? So that would be the goal for you guys to start it, make it solid, and then eventually you can hire somebody to manage it for you, right? And then it's always going to be bringing in leads. Uh, number three, broadcast content creation. So again, uh, TV shows, live social media, blogs, radio segments. Now, one thing that I will tell you guys about social media is that it can get very time consuming. So time block it into your schedule. You do not want to spend eight hours making social media content because although it will bring leads, it's not going to bring leads the day that it's posted. So say maybe an hour a day content creation. And one thing that I do like to do is I like to bulk content create. So I will record, and I'll tell you guys about that in a second, but I'll record a lot, take a lot of pictures, prepare it, and just save it as a draft. And then when I get up in the morning, I just hit post because it's ready to go. So that's another thing. Um, all right, direct mail. Again, you are going to have to pay money for that. So that wouldn't be like my very first thing to try, but you know, it is a, a thing. Uh, just sold, just listed cards, um, quarterly market updates. Hack, you can do those through email. People like those. Um, or quarterly market updates. What if you pull up the quarterly market update and you make a video about it? Boom, social media content, right? Here's what we're seeing this quarter, guys. Last quarter was this. This quarter, we're expecting that. Give me a call if you want to consult about your particular situation, right? Boom. There's call to action. It's informational. And they know your face, your voice, et cetera. Uh, promotional item swag. I will say I love this. Um, I have a hoodie with my logo. I have pens with my logo, my phone number. I have little notepads with my logo, my phone number. I was wondering about that because I actually used to make and sell swag. Yeah. So does it actually really work? Well, I think it depends on how you use it, right? Yeah. So my logo, I'm not going to wear it to places where I'm already getting business. I'm not going to wear my logo you know, when I am doing a consult, because they're already there for my business, so that's not going to work. But for me personally, like if I'm going to the gym, mm -hmm. yes, I'm going to wear my shirt with the okay. gym and maybe start a conversation, right? Yeah. Uh, because people get curious. They want to know what is that. Like, I cannot tell you guys how many times I've been grocery shopping with my uh, hoodie, and they're like, oh, what's that logo off? And I'm like, oh, it's actually mine. It's my company. I'm a realtor. It's my car. Da, 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 you know? Mm -hmm. And then it's like, oh, cool. And I actually, I'll share this with you guys. I have an online card. So what I tell people when they ask for a card, I said, let me send you my virtual card. I'll text you my link. What's your phone number? They do not hesitate because they already asked for the card. Were they going to say, oh, never mind. I don't want it. No, here's my number. Okay, cool. So now they register. You have their thing and now you can follow up, you know? So it's just the little things um, that you just have to be aware of. Uh, now, as far as your question goes, what I do is when they come to the consult, because I do consults before they're pre-approved. That's how I work my business and it just works. So at the consult, they get two pens and two notepads with my information. And at the consult, I get their address. So at the end of the year, they get a calendar, right? So even if they don't work with me today because they don't qualify, because they don't have the savings, because they're not ready, now I've given them something. So it kind of makes them feel like they owe me something back. And y'all, I do have people that met with me three years ago and they've been working for three years on their credit and I forgot about them and they're calling me hey we're ready now we met three years ago but like you know what I mean so it's all about that personal touch you bring them in you go over the process you set the expectations you let them know how you work what you can do for them and a little gift voila that's what works for me yeah, yeah. so I I just order them on Vistaprint the oh, the virtual card? No, it's Popple. Sorry, I thought you meant the other content. So it's just P O P L. <laughs> and you, what I love about that is that the little link will take them to a little page which has all your handles. So they can click on the Facebook logo, it'll take it to your Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, phone number, uh, email address, literally anything that you want to tag on there, it'll tag on there. You put your little picture, it's perfect. And you can program it, which I have it that way, so that whenever they click on it, it first asks them for their info. They can click off of it if they want, but nine times out of 10, they just go ahead and fill it out. Yes. Yep. It's great. I mean, that is like my little, small little secret. I love it. What is it? They have a free version. Um, but if you, uh, if you get the paid version, you get like a little extra, a couple extra perks, like you can put your logo on it and stuff. It's like $5 a month. So it's nothing crazy. 
I think it's worth the investment. Well, when mine pulls up, I didn't, they asked for the, mm -hmm, the information, right? Yep. Yep. You can, yeah, you can keep that on or take it off if you want. I have mine on too. Um, but if, if they wanted to, they can just click like out of that screen and it doesn't make them do it. Or I think you can set it up. I don't remember, but yes, it's a great tool. I, I love it. That's how it does it. Yeah. And it's great because then the app itself will text you. Hey, All did right. you follow up with so-and-so? It's great. I love it. Um, oh, yes. They're similar. Oh, okay. They're they're basically like very similar very concepts. Similar. I think they're a little yeah. different. Um, I use Popple. I like yeah. the aesthetics of Popple better, but it's yeah. a personal choice. Okay. Yeah, yeah, but it's. it's mm-hmm. Yeah. So when they were doing the, the contracts class, there was they told guy, you guys about that. Well, there was a guy in there. Ah, uh, yeah, y'all. I love Popple. Like when I discovered it, I was like, oh my gosh. Love it. Um, Cause like I said, it just makes it so easy to get people's contact information. Um, there's a lot of people that I know that I don't have them on social media. I just know their name and I know they're like the aunt of the friend from high school or whatever. And then I'll run into them at the store and they're like, oh my gosh, you sell houses, right? Yes. Oh, I've been meaning to call you, but I don't know how to get in contact with you. You have a card on you? No, I actually have my virtual one. Can I text it to you right now? Oh yeah, what's your phone number? Do, do, do. Boom, you have your contact, right? Whereas if I would have handed them the card and waited for them to call, who knows if they would have called, right? It just works. And there's a QR code, which we um, printed our QR code on the back of our hoodies. So boom, if somebody's behind you, done oh, so yeah, it just it good. works amazing i'm telling y'all i yeah, love there's it a, there's another one hi hello uh i haven't heard of that one but yeah probably same similar concept right the lady that comes in on friday <laughs> yeah yeah i mean there's so many tools out there so you guys just the thing is get the one that you're going to use that's going to be the one that's going to work yeah. best for you right so you say in the in your opinion the popple yeah, i like it I like oh, yeah. it. And what I do, I will tell you, I do have physical cards, but I will throw them in with like my buyer console guide whenever they come. Right. But I like to have control of things. So I like to have their contact, everything. And okay, now you got my physical card. You know, it's just one of those things. What I've been doing is afterwards, I send them a note. Yeah. Thanks for meeting, you know, pleasure meeting you. And yes. I gave my cards out to a couple of people yesterday, but, you know, it was just a Right. Yes, I like it. And the other thing too is that you can end up putting your QR code on the back of your business card and just say, you know, for more ways to contact me, take a picture of this. You know, I mean, there's just ways to get creative. Um, but I just personally, every time I would hand out a card, I would barely ever get a call. Whereas with this, like I can reach out and they reply, you know? Um, but okay, so public relations, press, etc., sponsorship, that I would say maybe a little bit later down the line when you have the extra money to sponsor something and then just kind of get your name out there. And then of course, both uh, farming, events, networking, uh, purchasing things. Now out of all these, I will tell you one thing that has been golden for me has been events, right? Client appreciation events. So what we do is we try to have four events per year and we don't pay for it. We get our lender partner, attorney, et cetera, to sponsor them for us. And we just invite all of our past clients and we just say, hey, as a thank you for, you know, always supporting our business. We're having this event for free for you. Come join us. Here's the time. Here's the date. Let us know if you'll be there so we can get a good head count. So we've done Christmas party. I get my dad to dress up as Santa. Got the Santa outfit on Amazon. Um, and I just have like a little backdrop and we just bring food and we have music and we just interact. And of course, when they walk in, I just, you know, really go greet them. Hey, oh my gosh, I haven't seen you in a while. How you been? Get to see you, hug, whatever. It's really just about them feeling special, right? So we do that. Uh, during springtime, we do a free family photo. So they show up dressed up with their family. Photographer takes a picture of them. We send them a printed copy of it later on with a little letter. Hey, it was so good to see you follow up kind of what we talked about with them. Like, it was great to know that your kid just started this thing, you know, congrats, let us know, whatever. So it's just that personal touch, right? So we did that one. We do an outdoor movie night, um, which that's great. Whatever movie's trending, we just play it, tell them to bring their blankets. We provide popcorn and drinks and that's it. Like, and that kind of in my head helps me stay on top of the four touches, you know, the quarterly touch with everyone in my past 
client list uh, because those are the people that get invited. Now, um, with you guys starting, if you don't have obviously like a long list of past clients, make it a sphere event. Invite everyone in your sphere or like your top, you know, 50 people that you feel like would probably support you because they really like you or they know people that might need your service. Make it an event for your friends and family, you know? And it's just a great because you have to reach out to invite them. You have to reach out to confirm they're coming. You see them at the event and then you reach out again to say thank you for attending this event. You get a lot of social media content because you take pictures of people and then you post about it. This event was such a success. So grateful for other people that support my business. You know, ta-da. that's like five things of you being in front of people without saying, hey, I sell houses, right? It's not the movie thing. What are you showing sure, here? Well, <laughs> I went a little above and beyond. So we actually rented a space at a park uh, in Rock Hill because we're mainly from Rock Hill. So we rented a space at a park. I think that was about $300. And then we actually bought the screen and the projector on Amazon, which wasn't too crazy. Uh, and then we just set it up there. And then we got one of the local restaurants to provide us with nachos. And that was free. And so we just gave everybody nachos, had a little popcorn machine. So all of that stuff, we added it up and just asked the sponsors to essentially give us a certain amount for each. And then you get what? For sponsors, they get? Well, we... At, yes. So at the event, we will um, hand out whatever material they have. So like our attorney has like little things with his logos that we pass out to everybody. Uh, we let everybody know, hey, you know, um, if you're looking to do a closing, this is our number one trusted, you know, um, attorney or this is our lender. And they also get like, for example, the lender would get the list of everybody that attended. So then they can also kind of do the whole um, marketing, just staying in touch kind of thing. Get to Renting the movie theater? Um, I looked into it, but we wanted to make it a little different, like outdoor. We were going for the outdoor experience. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we've looked into that, and I know a lot of agents have done that successfully too. So again, it just depends on your sphere and what you're going for. But yeah, we've done that. And then what else did we do? Oh, and also we do uh, online giveaways and stuff, which it says right there, contest. That's a great way to get followers. We say, go follow my page, like this post, share it. And, you know, you get an entry or you get an entry for liking it. You get another entry for commenting and you get another entry for whatever. And the key, you get five entries if you refer someone that's interested in buying a house or selling a house this year. And then you do a little drawing on a live Facebook and you give them a $25 Starbucks gift card or whatever. And again, you can go to your lender partner, whoever, and they can sponsor those giveaways. So those are just all great things. And again, they do work. We've gotten referrals from that. And the other thing too about client appreciation events is that every single event that we've done, we've had maybe between 25 to 40 people show up and we've gotten three leads out of every event, at least, that have said, hey, um, can you give me a call tomorrow? I actually want to get started on the process or we're actually looking into this. Let's set something up, but just not today because we're enjoying the event, you know? So again, it just really, really, really works. Client referrals. Um, as for referrals, I will say I'm not the best at doing this on one on one, but I do post. And if I tend to get, you know, let's say I get three referrals in one week, I'll just post about it. Be like, oh my gosh, this week we got three referrals already. We're so excited. We're so happy to help our people. Blah blah. You know, um, reward for referrals. I will tell y'all, I don't do that um, personally, like individually, but I do let them know that they're getting invited to these events because they refer a lot of business, because they are supporting my business. Um, so that's kind of their reward, our events, right? Some people will send out gift cards, um, little gifts, whatever, it's up to you. Um, the first six years, I, would, I wouldn't even say thank you and I wouldn't do the client events and people were still referring. At the end of the day, if you're a good agent, you show that you care, you do things well, you will still get the referrals. Thank you with a handwritten note, that's, that's a good one. Um, and then just provide value. Some people, especially once they buy their home, what I like to offer is for them to just get an update in their neighborhood in general, just so that they can see how prices are going up or down in their neighborhood. And that's like a monthly thing that you can set up. And again, you're in front of them consistently. Agent to agent referrals. These are great. Um, if you want to 
grow this, just, you know, make friends with agents. There are certain agents that don't like to work certain price points. There's agents that don't like to go to certain cities. There's agents that don't like to work on the weekends. I mean, there's different things and they're always looking for an amazing agent that they can hand off a lead to that they know will be converted. Um, in my case, referral purposes, I speak Spanish. I'm happy to help with Spanish speaking clients, you know? Um, so there's that. Uh, there is a tool on command to do, uh, to kind of search for a referral network. Um, I'm not all that great at it, but it is there. <laughs> And then obviously, you know, KW is everywhere, so you can get worldwide referrals. Ooh, this one's great. And this is also for social media. So business to business referrals, right? Uh, we, a lot of our clients are small businesses. So we've kind of realized that small businesses like how we work, right? And the tools that we offer. So what we're doing is now we're reaching out to different small businesses and saying, hey, as part of our content this year, we'd love to give you a shout out on our page. And what we do, like what I've done now is I ask them for three pictures that represent their business, way to contact them, um, their business name, and what areas they serve. And then every so often, I just make a post with those three photos. And I just say, if you're looking for this service, reach out to this company. Here's their phone number. And then they share it. And then guess what? Now the algorithm's like, oh, they're posting stuff that's worth sharing. So then it starts pushing it out to more people as well as they get more exposure. We have gotten the few that we've posted have told us that they've gotten business from our shout out, you know? So it's like you're helping them. So now guess what? When they're needing a service, they're more than likely going to come to you. Where do you put that on? Your social media? On Facebook. Facebook. Yeah, okay. I do it on Facebook. I used to actually go visit the business. Like if it was a restaurant or something, I would make like a little video and then I'd do a voiceover, but it was very time consuming. So I stopped doing that. So now I'm just doing the photos. Um, but every so often I'll still make videos and I'll just do the food, the place. And then I'll just say, I went to this place. You have to check it out. It's located here. This is the kind of food they have. Um, they're a great little small business. The owners, blah, blah, blah. You know, go check them out. And that's it. If you do it so often, they're not feel obligated to... <laughs> They do. Yeah, I'll do something for them. Yeah. And if you tag them, like literally, let me tell you guys. Yeah. They're going to feel obligated if you do it so many times. They do. Like, I go to. Yeah. I go to the same salon every single month, right? And the nail salon. And so, like, I've, you know, he was, I was like, yeah, you know, I'm in real estate. And he was like, okay, that's cool. And then I was, he started asking me about, like, investment property. So then I started giving him information on that while he was doing my nails. And then, you know, it's been probably maybe, like, five months now. And he was like, you know what? He's like, why don't you bring your cards? We'll put them at the front of the thing. He's like, I mean, when I buy, like I'm buying with you for sure. But like, you are you sound like a great agent. Like, let's get our clients to be your clients too. I was like, let's go. What did I do? I did two little videos of their salon and me getting my feet done and my hands done. And I just said, if you live in Rock Hill, you're looking for a great place. Because they are a really great salon. So I'll be like, if you want to get your nails done, you want to relax, you want great service, they know my name when I walk in. So it's like that kind of thing. And it just, it works. And then sometimes he'll be doing somebody else's nails and they'll say real estate. And it's like, oh, this girl right here, you need to get, you know, get in touch with her. And it's like, what? So people really just like, we're thankful when people refer us and give us a shout out. They're thankful the same way. So, you know, reciprocate. We have to remember that this is a people business, right? Sometimes we just think about the commission or sometimes we just think about how many houses am I gonna sell? But at the end of the day, Every person has a story, they have life goals, they have things. And if you can show that you can get past the, I'm just selling one more house, they will stick around. Uh, you can do geographic farming. Uh, you can do open houses, social media, uh, just having conversations, contacts, etc. Again, I personally don't, my big thing is my sphere. I care and love on them. I add social media as my little extra thing and that's my entire business. Like I don't, I don't even have the time to try any of these other things because I'm doing so well within that, right? So just find what works for you and do it. I know a lot of great agents here, they just focus on open houses and their entire business is open houses. It's just what works for you. Uh, events and seminars, we don't have anything on here. Uh, yeah, so leads are everywhere. Like I said, if you wear your logo, nine times out of 10, a conversation is going to be started wherever you are. Grocery store, coffee shop, repair shop, 
hair salon, dentist office, wherever you go. Um, I make it a point for places that I frequent to really know that I'm an agent where I serve and that I'd be delighted to help them or any other clients. So my hairstylist has my calendar right in front of her thing. My nail guy said that I can go ahead and bring in my business cards um, so he can do that. Um, let's see. Everybody, like when I go get my old change at Toyota, they get a little calendar, you know, just the places that you frequent, like let them know, hey, I need you to refer me <laughs> and I'll refer you too. All right, so any ahas that you guys would like to just share with the group? I mean, everything is good. I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's, you would think it would be common sense, but you don't, <coughs> you don't think about it as a big picture like that, but it did, it makes sense. Right. I like how you, you make social media <laughs> yeah, I mean, it is. You just have to, like anything, you just have to dedicate some time to it, have a game plan, and just go for it. Be consistent. Yeah, your yeah. meetings, like the Christmas party and those, you know, client events and stuff. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. It's, it's so, like, I love dogs, but I was, like, thinking about incorporating that into it, but then yeah. would that, like, make people who don't like dogs? Go to you like so, or do you want to be more wide open or do you want to specialize well i will tell you guys i, I feel like special like at the end of the day this industry can get really complicated <laughs> when something goes wrong in the transaction right the house doesn't appraise there's a lot more things that were hidden on the inspection report so at the end of the day you want to work with people that you can connect with beyond they think you're a great agent right so i personally i post my dog and I connect with people that have dogs and I don't know if anybody that has a cat has kind of like steered away from me, which I don't think so because I have a, I have a client that we actually just went to lunch the other day because she's ready to buy again. And she was like, you know, I was like, she was like, how's your dog? And I'm like, oh, da, da, da. And I'm like, how's your cat? She's like, oh, da, da, da. So I don't think they'll steer away from it. But if they do, those are not your people, right? The biggest mistake that I feel like we all do as new agents is wanting to get all the business but that's not where it's at it's about getting the business of your people people that are going to like you people that are going to trust you so that when you say hey um i know that you love this house but please be aware that these red flags are going to become a problem down the line are you sure that they're actually going to listen and they're not going to think that you know you just don't want them to buy that house because maybe another one of do you know what I mean? So the biggest thing here is trust. So just work with whoever likes you. And if they don't like you, then they're not your client. And they'll probably connect better with another agent anyways. So go for it. Post you can, it. You can, you can post the adoption date. Yeah. yeah. I have two husbands and a oh. shepherd. So I kind of wanted to go around. Yes. Like, like I'm obsessed with Yes. So I was thinking about doing the like $200 to like the husky house. For closing stuff, I just wasn't sure. Oh, yeah. No, do it. No, it works. Trust me. Like, do it. Um, I don't know if you guys have heard this, but they say the riches are in the niches because it's you have to niche down. Like, if you try to do everything, everyone, it's not really going to work. Just who, what, who do you relate with? Who do you, you know, whatever. Like, my thing is, um, I'm originally from Mexico. I'm bilingual. I'm like a first gen in the U.S. So that's who I connect with. I connect with Spanish speakers. I connect with, um, you know, first gen people that are just now kind of discovering everything on their own because their parents didn't really teach them, whatever, you know. So that's who I connect with. That's where my whole business is. And I do every so often get people, for example, that went to my high school that don't fit in any of these categories, but we're friends. So it's fine. So Niching down doesn't mean that you're going to turn away business that doesn't fit in that niche, but it just means that that's who you're going to cater with, and then they will come to you. So in your case, I think the dog thing is amazing. I have my little dog, and I connected with a lot of people that I didn't even know had dogs to begin with when I started posting my dog, and then now I have new business from that, you know? So yeah. Oh, that's perfect. Yeah, no, definitely. Do it and it'll also kind of help you with just connecting with people like post videos about when you're dog sitting and tell little stories about the funny thing that one dog did. I mean, people like that, you know, that's how they connect with you. 
Um, all right, so then daily success systems. So if you're going to take social media seriously, you want social media to be one of your biggest things. <coughs> Whoa, sorry. <coughs> Make sure you have your conversations, your contacts added, do your written notes, and then do the 10 5 1 social media. <coughs> and I guess your next session with whoever is going to teach this probably, I think, tomorrow, uh, how to capture more leads. But um, that is all as far as the slideshow goes. Um, what questions do you guys have that I can help you? Um, I got one. I think yes. handwritten notes. We're sort of, at least with me, I can talk about me. I fail on it. How do you do that? Do you have envelopes and yeah. addresses? Well, let me tell you my secret on that one. So I'm all about systems, right? So I use this page that's called amcards.com, right? Now, I use that for my thank you notes, my happy birthdays, my happy anniversary, all of that stuff. Now, that is a paid membership. I believe it's about $39 a month, um, but you do get... I want to say like 60 cards on there and they're not specifically handwritten because you make it online it gets printed and mailed but the thing that i like about that is that first of all they're really good quality so it just kind of makes it seem like you truly cared about them because you spent this money he asked about handwritten notes so i use amcards.com so it's a paid membership um but it's really good quality cards um like i said i use them for closing what I do is whenever we close the picture that I took, I'll put it on the front. And then inside, I'll say congratulations on your new home, best wishes, blah, blah, blah. And the best part, on the back of it, it has, you can put your branding on it. So I have our team photo, all of our contact information, our address. And it's like low key, you know, congratulations. But low key, here's my information if you ever need it. And I've gone to my clients' homes and they have it on a frame or on a wall or on the fridge. So it's again, just staying top of mind right and that's in that same thing i'll do birthdays i'll do the anniversaries if i see something special that happens in their life i'll take the photo and send them a card and just congratulate them on that so that's how i do that now when i say I systematize is for all the what i do is i have a spreadsheet and i have all the like january birthdays are these people here's their address their phone number etc february whatever and like on the 29th or 30th of the previous month, I'll go ahead and send all of them out for that following month. So everybody gets, like if their birthday's in January, all the January birthdays will probably get the card on the first. And it just says, you know, happy birthday. I mean, you know, a day or two behind, even if their birthday's on the 28th, they got the card on the first. Now they're like, oh, they're thinking about me the whole time. So that's what works for me. And I've been using it for a good bit. And I get such great feedback from people. Now, what picture are you talking about? The picture with your group or a picture with them? Um, the picture for the closing, is that what you're saying? Yeah. Yeah, the picture of them. Them in the house. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or at the, on the back. On the front? Yeah, so the front will have a pic. Yeah, the back of the card is my team photo. Oh, okay. And whenever I was an individual, it was just my headshot. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was that, and what I try to do is whenever we do the final walkthrough, I'll go ahead and ask them, hey, can I get a picture of you in front of your house? Every so often I will forget, or not everybody showed up, or we do the final walkthrough a little too early and everybody's in their PJs, uh, so then I'll take a picture at the closing table. So whichever photo I get then, that's what gets posted on social media to congratulate them, and then they get the card in the mail. Um, so that's what I use, and like I said, it's all about systems. Just go ahead and organize you know, like I said, birthdays. I will tell you guys, for the people that are asking me whenever I invite people, I do use this little app that is called Hit Em Up. And this is great for like blast text messages. It's also about $5 a month. And it's called Hit Em Up. And what I do is I go ahead and group these are all my past clients. These are all my homeowners. These are all my leads or whatever. And then whenever I want to just do a blast text message on, we have this event coming up, you're invited, let us know. I just type the message and what it'll do is it'll kind of add their first name in individually. You don't have to retype it or copy paste. 
you just say send and then you just kind of revise send 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 so i can send 150 messages in like five minutes and then when they start replying then i start having real conversations with them but that initial hint to start the conversation i just do it through there whoever you choose you can group people you can select certain people so i have like a group of well and i actually have my group of english speaking past clients spanish speaking past clients and so then that's how i do it i think you can um but i think the one on command is through twilio and i think it gives you a different phone number this one it comes from your phone number mm -hmm. which again there's nothing wrong with um Twilio, it's great. A lot of agents use it successfully, but I already have two phone numbers. So I feel like throwing a third phone number to people is just going to drive them insane. But yeah, you can also do that through Twilio. Yep. Uh, let's see, what else do we have? Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Okay, do you guys want some content ideas? Yeah. Okay, cool. All right, so, well, actually, let me, oh, okay, okay, okay. I know what I'm going. Sorry, my brain's like, going super fast. <laughs> so how content, what content works for me? Facebook, it's pictures, right? Pictures do so much better on Facebook. Now, what I like to do sometimes is if I don't have a picture in regards to whatever I'm talking about, I'll just do a picture of me on my computer and then the caption will state whatever I'm talking about, right? Uh, which I'll go into that in a little bit. So Facebook, I'm going to post a picture. Now that same thing that I typed up, I'm going to make a video about it, like talking about it. And I'm going to post that on TikTok, right? And then on Reels, which is Instagram, uh, Instagram does really well with videos as well, a lot more than pictures nowadays. So then I will just post a random video of me, like walking through a house or something. Um, or putting in a sign in the yard or holding a little sold sign, like just random, put music on it and then put the little writing on the video and make like it change little by little. So then people will just keep watching your video until they finish reading. Um, and that gets you the views, it gets people engaged, they start following you, that kind of thing. So that's the kind of content that works for me. Now, the biggest thing is to do bulk. So I say, okay, once a month, I'm going to do bulk random videos. So I'll record myself, um, like I said, with a yard sign, putting it in the yard, uh, like opening a door, letting somebody into the house. And I just do these at my house, y'all. Like I'm not even, like it's nothing crazy. Um, and then if I, like if my mom ever records me like pushing my knees on the swing or little videos like that, like any of the videos that are on your phone, I guarantee you guys can probably use that as like a little background, whatever. So for example, let me show y'all some of the content that I posted recently. Say, um, TikTok is video, right? mm -hmm. Yeah, TikTok is 100% videos. Um, and TikTok is very raw and genuine. So TikTok is the kind of thing that if you're in your car, and you're waiting for your client, you literally just open up your camera and start talking about the house or about whatever you want to talk about. And I'll give you guys some ideas on things that are super easy that I love to do. So for example, on Facebook, here's what I did. I took a picture of our buyer guide, our seller guide and our investor guide with business cards and a pen. So I just took the picture and I posted buying a home, selling a home on a real estate investment journey all of the above, we can help. So excited for what 2024 holds, give us a call or send a text to schedule your consultation. And that was it. I got two calls from that. So it's like <laughs> crazy. Um, we did the little seminar. At the end of the seminar, we got everybody to take a picture, like a group photo. So then I kind of just said, hey, we're so excited. These are the future investors. Um, thanks to everybody that came, here's who our sponsors were and people were just sharing it. So now people know that we're a great real estate team if they're looking to invest, right? So we've, we've set up three appointments from that. Um, one of the agents here, uh, had a listing and she did a price reduction and she said, you guys, please post this. I need to get it sold. So what we did was we took the same photos that she posted and we just posted the details and we said, if you're interested, call, text us, right? And she got it under contract, not by us. But again, that gives you an idea to post. Always be on the lookout for those. The agents that say, you know, we're looking for someone to host the open house 
or you know, uh, we're doing a price adjustment. Those are the listings that need attention. So you kind of help each other out. You post it, maybe you'll get them a buyer. They get more exposure. Maybe they'll go on their contract, you know? So always be on the lookout for those. Uh, we always post when we go under contract with the client and when they get sold and just listed price adjustment, all of that. Yes. So my thing is like, I don't have any clients or anything right now. Like yeah. I'm so new. So like, what do I like? What should I? Have? So the really cool thing, I uh, do new construction. That's what I was gonna call. Yes. Like new Go to new construction communities and tell them, hey, I'm looking to focus on new construction. I want to do videos of and highlight your home. So then yeah. ask the rep, like, what's your inventory? You know, what are the price points? And get them to tell you, okay, this model has five bedrooms, three bathrooms. You know, this is the price point and here's the incentive. And literally like take pictures of every room yeah. and post the details, that's one post. And then at the end, call me if you wanna buy. And don't ever say which builder it is because then they can just go directly to the builder, right? You want them to go through you. No. And they don't mind. They even tell you that. And they're like, don't post us because then they'll just come here and then you don't get the business and you created right. it, right? right? So that's like a huge thing. So do the pictures and that's your Facebook post, right? Then do a video just walking through it. That's your Instagram and your TikTok post. And you can reuse that like so many ways. You can do like if they have, I don't know, like the most gorgeous kitchen, you can literally just do like a five second video of the kitchen and you can post it and talk about that there's i don't know like down payment assistance program in south carolina right now like if the community is in south carolina yeah. then you can say you know this builder is giving you up to five thousand dollars towards your closing costs this gorgeous kitchen comment below if you want to see more you know that kind of thing yeah. and so that will get people being like oh well you know the only thing that was holding me back is that i haven't saved money but if i can get this incentive then maybe i can make it work and then you got a buyer it's no construction like it's a deal you know um so yeah that's what i would do there's so many builders they have model homes even if they're in the process of building you can get a picture of that and just say, you know, I mean, a video of it and just basically say, hey, I can help you with new construction. Um, depending on where you're looking, you might need to wait six months. If you're looking for a new home in the summer, you might need to get started today. You know, like those little like things that we know, most people don't know that. So just posting that will be great. And that'll get you started. And that way you can kind of select what your price point is going to be, right? Because if you want to start you know, in the three, fives, eight hundreds, just go highlight those homes, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So those are great. And builders love it. And that's also a great relationship because they also get a lot of walk-ins with no agents. So there's that. Well, don't they like that? Because then they don't have to pay an agent. They don't because then it kind of opens up a lot of room for lawsuits okay. if they misrepresent, which sometimes it just happens with the builder. Something messes up. And the very first thing they're going to do is going to try to sue the agent. Oh, well, you were working for the builder. And I didn't know that. And if I would have had an agent, but you didn't tell me I got it. It just opens yeah. up a can of worms and they don't want to deal with that either. I've had several agents call me and tell me, hey, this person came. They don't have an agent. Like, help them. Like, I want to pay you a commission. <laughs> like, please don't make me do this work. It's kind of what how that goes, you know. And a lot of times, too, they'll walk in and that's not in their price point. So then they do need an agent to help them find something in their price point and it might not be new construction. So that's why they need you. So they do. New builders are friends, except for one, but I think you guys will just, I don't think I can say it, but just whatever. Just ask around, make sure you ask all the questions. Do they like, do they, you know, pay commission? What are their warranties? What are their products? And Google is your best friend. Um, okay, one thing, okay, so here is what I did that's amazing. I did a series, right? So you don't have any clients, whatever, but guess what? Somebody out there needs to know how to buy a house. Like what's the first step, right? So what I did was I filmed a series and I made it, I think a seven part series. Do you do YouTube? No. Okay. I don't. I do. I, I just do TikTok and no, stuff. No, that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. Like, but do a series, like you guys. Those are the best things. The cool thing about TikTok and Instagram is that the videos that kind of work best are the one minute, right? So then that gives you the excuse to say, go to my next video. I'll post the next video tomorrow. Be sure to follow me so you can see it. 
And so I literally did a series for how to buy a house. I did a series how to sell a house. And that's it. It's like the most basic thing, right? So I say you need to get pre-approved and you need to make sure your credit's good. They'll look at your income and you need certain savings, right? So then I talk about that. And then I say, here's some things to make your credit better if you don't have great credit. Here's some ways that you'll ruin your credit. So please don't do these. So all of those things are videos, information. And even if somebody has great credit already, now that they know that you're very knowledgeable, they'll reach out to ask further questions. It's like, well, my credit's great. I'm ready to buy now then. I didn't know. Let's do it, you know? So I do that. Then I talk about the search process, how I give them an app, how, you know, Zillow and all of those get fed from our MLS. So they might as well reach out to us because we can get them that list directly. I talk about when we're under contract, what kind of inspections are there? Um, How do we negotiate the repairs? Can we negotiate a repair or maybe a credit or maybe a discount like you know all those little things that you would explain to someone that comes and asks you how do i buy a house make a video out of it Mm -hmm. they're on my tiktok and on um, instagram as a reel and then type up everything that you said post a picture of yourself holding a key and then that's your facebook yeah yeah please do please do no yeah 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 no please do go check them out like i said i make them a minute long um i personally do them in spanish and in english so we just kind of go back and forth on that um but yeah i mean there's so much content here's how you can buy a house now the other thing if you want to go the extra mile we go i have two really close like lender partners And then I make videos with them. So then we'll go grab coffee and then I'll do like an interview. Hey, so what would you tell somebody that's looking to buy a house now? And then they say the same thing. So it's a lot of repetitive information. We have to take into consideration that somebody that didn't see it three months ago might see it today. You know, they might have seen it three months ago and weren't ready. And now you just reminded them that that is in their plan this year. Say if you're making a video on like pre-approval process or whatever, are you allowed to like say like, well, we have like Matt Krasnoff from First Federal and yeah. Bo Bailey from Movement. You can say it. You can... Yeah, I don't okay. see anything wrong with it. All right. I'll yeah. Sure the thing that I think that we have to be really careful with when we're talking about loans, we can't really quote payments and we can't quote um, like interest rates and things like that. But you can certainly talk about the process. Right. You know, you're going to put in an application. And what I do is I give them credit. I say, this is who I work with. Let me introduce you to my preferred lender. And that's it. Okay. Yep. So there's something wrong there. And then tag them on their social media because then their sphere is going to see it. And then you just kind of do a whole collaboration thing, which is one thing that I do like about um, TikTok and Instagram is that you can collaborate on a video and then it'll show it on both of you guys as well versus tagging it as on a separate like screen, you know? So there's that. Um, Take a lot of pictures of yourself. I do. Well, now I actually have a photographer that will do a whole session and she gives us all these pictures. But what I used to do is I would go out there in that white wall with my little like key and just make a lot of just random things or that room all the way down the hallway, like that area. Oh my gosh. Like sit on that couch with your laptop and take a picture. Like seriously, just do it. Yep. And when you do new construction, take a picture in front of the house. You know, that could be your profile picture. I mean, go for it. Like, seriously, get creative and just do it. Stick to it. Any more questions? So do the series, the easiest things, how to buy a house, how to sell a house. If you don't know what subject to pick, Google, top 10 questions, um, first time home buyers. Yes. Chat GPT will make you guys a script for a video. Like, seriously, it's amazing. Chat GPT? Yes. Yeah. Um, what I did was K, uh, KW has, like, the buyer guide. And what I did was I, I don't know if you've seen it, but there's a step-by-step, like, one page that shows each step right so i basically kind of like took that and then expanded it so for example ours i'll tell you exactly what's on ours so our guide first talks about we introduce the team so who we are and what we do right 
Um, in my case, we have three people, but whenever it was just me, I would just say, I'm the agent, this is where I specialize, this is where I live, like whatever, just a little bio, right? Second page, what our mission and our vision is. Um, third page, so she asked about what we have on our buyer guide. So I'm just kind of telling her what we have. Um, so on the first page, it's an intro, like who am I? with my little head trying a little written intro. Second page, what's our mission? So we tell them we want to help you build generational wealth. That's our mission. That's what we're here for. And we want to give you a great experience so that you can keep using us in the future. So that's what we have next. Then we have the actual step by step, you know, get pre approved, pick an agent, you know, tell us your needs, all of that, which that one is a KW sheet. Um, it's just on the KW guide, I think I'll We'll see if we, I can get them to email you guys that page. Um, and so then after that, I kind of made the rest of the pages based on like my experience, what I've seen people struggle with. And I'm like, oh, I wish we would have talked about this at the beginning. So I'll give you guys my experience on that. <laughs> Number one, how repairs work. So I put North Carolina, South Carolina. North Carolina, you have a due diligence period. You got to negotiate everything. You know, by the end of it, if you decide to cancel, you have to pay your termination fee. In North Carolina, you know, you also have a due diligence period, but you do have to give the due diligence money up front. And if you do cancel, you do lose that. You know, so I just kind of say that North Carolina, I put on there per contract. Technically, the house is sold as is. And then I tell them, I mean, technically we can negotiate, but on paper it says as is. So just be aware, right? South Carolina, it's negotiable. So I just kind of break that down into bullet points of things that I know they're going to come back and ask me again. So it's like, no, I talked about it. You have it in writing and we'll talk about it again before we submit the offer. And we'll talk about it again during the negotiations. But by then you've already heard it three times, right? So that's been golden for me. Uh, the other thing, I have a page of do's and, well, don't so that you don't lose your loan, right? Top 10 things that will make you not qualify for a loan anymore. Buying a car, um, changing jobs, going from a W2 to a 1099, all of those things. And those are things that I just Googled. What are the top 10 things? Or I just asked the lender, hey, what are the 10 things that you see people do that now they can't afford their home or whatever, right? So then I made just a bullet point and that's a page. Um, I'm trying to think if I'm missing something, but I think that's it. It's like a maybe seven, eight page thing. And what I do is I just go to um, Office Depot and I buy the little plastic covers and the little rings and I bind them in the computer room. And so that's what I do. And again, that kind of helps with the branding because like our front page is our logo. Um, it used to be our photo, but we haven't updated one since the new member joined. So then it's our um, logo. Uh, but we basically just hand those at the consultation. So Again, it just gives them something. They have something to reference back. I've had people hand it to their friend. Hey, I'm not going to be ready. Or, hey, I already bought a house, but Diana gave me this whenever I started. So take a look and then call her. And then they do. And they show up with that. And I'm like, well, I have another one for you. But, you know, that kind of thing. And we do update it as the market changes. So we have had whenever it was crazy multiple offers, we had a page talking about how you can win in multiple offers. Now that that's not really a thing, we took it off. But if it becomes a thing, then we'll throw it back in there. So we just kind of adjust depending on the market and what we think they should know. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Um, people here to help us take videos. Um, I think, I don't know if there's anybody specifically for that. I do know that we have a social media person, which I think if you hire her, then she'll help you with all the content. But if you want to kind of just start on your own, I would just partner up with somebody here and just each other, help each other out do content. Yeah. Yes, I would do that. Um, let me see. Uh, da -da 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 let me see what else I need to cover. But I think that's it. Like I said, definitely go check out my pages and feel free to like copy the content and just make it your own. Um, oh, I also have this really cool um, lender that he just started doing this for like his um, lender partners. He will literally make a little really cool video of a tour of your home and then tag you on it. So if you guys go to my page, it says Isaac Tours Homes. He's my mortgage lender. And every time I say, hey, there's this listing that I want to highlight, 
we'll just meet at the property, 10 minute video. He does all the editing, puts the music on, whatever, and then he posts it and tags me. So, you know, like try to, whenever you interview um, lenders that are gonna be your lender partners, you know, make sure you ask, like, what else do you do? Okay, you get them pre approved, you close them, cool, but what else? Like, you know. I have a question. Do you, do you use the stuff from RPR and, and our, the, like the content or what? Not the content necessarily, but the reports, because you call yes. all the negative reports. Oh, yeah. All the, like, Literally everything. Yes. It's so cute. Yes. Like, yes. 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 I feel like people don't use them, but yeah, you can definitely do that. Okay. Good. Yeah. I'm like, that seems like it just does it all for you. All very up to date. Like, are you still supposed to do yet? Yeah, like, yes. being behind our. I mean, it, it gave me a neighborhood update, but just for fun on my neighbor. Like, wow. Okay, yeah. You know, no. Yeah. Definitely. It's, like, it's just it's RPR, and you just call up like the um, the the um, it's on the what's it called? Um, um. You know that thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's on the the. Uh, yeah, yeah literally, like, like use it, anything, you guys. Yeah, and again, you can you can like post it. You can make your own graphic with that information yeah. with your little logo. Yeah, yeah. Okay. the rule of thumb that I've seen. Um, there's this uh, really awesome agent in Columbia, South Carolina, that's also here with KW. Um, she says. What, before you post your content, think like real estate related, think about is this something that somebody's going to screenshot? Is this something somebody's going to share? Is this something that somebody's going to save? So just think about those three things when you're posting. So are they going to share a new construction house with incentives? Yes. Um, are they going to save the top three things they need to do to pre-qualify for a house? Yes. You know what I mean? So um, don't underestimate the stuff that you guys already know. How do we qualify for a house? How do we not qualify for a house? How much um, down payment do we need? Talk about the FHA not being just a first time home buyer program. It's a primary residence program. Talk about how you can sell a house before it's paid off. A lot of people don't know that. Like there's so much stuff that we know that they don't know. So just post about it, post away, post everything. Um, and if one day you just get like super inspired and you're like, oh my gosh, I have all these ideas. Write them down, prepare the content, have it ready to go to post. Yep, so that's it. All right, guys, so you guys have my contact information. Follow me. Um, if you guys want my popple, I can text it to you guys. So just, or actually, you know what? I have my QR code, so if you guys, I'll just come around if y'all want it. And that is it. I hope you guys found this helpful. Yes, thank you. <laughs> awesome. All right, so I got a QR code. Who needs it? Yeah. I know it's like I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it.